Right my lovers, here we are in old London town and we go mudlarking again. We're looking for anything old and interesting that's left behind on the foreshore when the tide goes out of the River Thames. Let's get some luck in the muck. <laughs> but you are a mud lover. I'm a mud lover, I love all this stuff. So it's a bit gloomy and wet out here, but all weathers, that's me. Don't mind going out in all of it. The treasures don't find themselves, so we've got to be up for it any weather. First one is pretty cool. It's actually quite an old little pipe. Come and have a look. Now look at that. That's a really early one. That is that pipe is 1650 thereabouts. Lovely little bowl. Obviously it's missing the stem, but yeah, really happy with that. Nice little find. Good way to start the day. Ooh. Well, I'll be doing some detecting a little bit, but I'll just have a little look around here first to see what I can find. I just found one clay pipe and I just found another. In fact, yeah, I think it's one. Definitely found one. Where did it go? It was there a minute ago. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so the one there, look, just poking out. I even lost it myself. I uh, have to wait and see. I'm surprised it hasn't been trodden on because, or maybe it's protected by those two little rocks there, but it looks like a quite a nice one. Oh so, yeah. Sweet little Victorian pipe. Look how black that is. But that will uh, fade out. Now do you remember a while back we were talking about the holes in oysters and how they got there? Go check the video out, it's really cool. There's loads of theories, but I've just found another one and a couple of complete ones. So what I've done is bought some tools to try and see if I can replicate uh, button making. Basically it's a drill rather than doing it by hand. So this is what I'm talking about. This is not the best example, I've got a few better examples at home. And this may well have been a boring insect, um, or maybe smashed out to open the oyster in the first place, or maybe even button making. I love the idea of it being a button, that this could have actually been worn by someone. So I've got a few other shells here, different sizes and stuff. So I'm gonna take them home, and I'm gonna try and make a button out of it. As you know, I do love to repurpose things and upcycle things, so check out my other videos for more upcycling and things like that. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go. I bought some special drills, um, diamond coated thingy bobs that can help drill through this. So, so later on, we'll go and drill out some holes and see what success we get. Might even make a button or two. There's a couple of theories as to why uh, we find them with holes in, some are square, some are round. Uh, maybe because they were used for button making, it's very possible, they probably were quite a lot of them. But a lot of them just have one singular hole in, so check out these other ones and uh, give me your theories as to why you think there are holes in the, in the oysters. Now, some people say that they were used as cladding on buildings. Other people think they might have been used in roofs, whereby they were used to pack out the tiles to get them even. Good, good theory. Uh, my favorite theory, and it's not the most exciting one, is they were used to farm oysters. So what you do is you put a load on a string in a rack, and that would attract other oysters to come and sort of, um, you know, duplicate and whatever, and then they were harvested for food because London needed feeding. Oysters were the food of the poor in Victorian times and going back way back to Roman times. So uh, that's why I find so many down here because they were used for food basically, and they probably tried to recycle the oyster shells in some form or another, but they just we just don't know. And if you try Googling it, there's a big joke on the internet, an April Fool's joke saying maybe they were an early type of oyster card. <laughs> oyster card is what you use to get on the tube so maybe it's some sort of payment to get across the river but that's just a joke so check that out if you can find it but it's still a mystery um, still waiting for the answer again my theory whereby they're harvested is my favorite theory um, because it just seems so practical and why else would there just be one hole in them so I'd love to hear what you think if you think they're just for button making fine you can think that and that's totally your opinion if you've got any other great ideas what they could be used for 
Um, let me hear them. So this is my playground for the next half hour. Do some detecting around here. Some nice old posts and bits of bobs sticking out, so you never know what we might find. Let's get the detector on. Got a cover on it today because it's so wet. <laughs> So far, I've only had a few buttons for the detector, but just there, look. Looks like it's a hammered. Oh man, if that is, that'd be so cool. I think it is as well. That's a hammered. Get in. I'm not gonna clean it. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna get it home, clean it properly. I'm not gonna rub it or anything, but, oh, I'll drop it first, but, Oh, so tempting just to rub away, but I'm going to clean it properly at home and see what it is. Keep watching, wait till the end, see what this beautiful hammer is. Probably, probably a medieval hammer coin. Well, I was really starting to give up hope in this little spot because I weren't really finding much, but oh, it just goes to show you, persevere, get some luck in the muck. Yes! Ah! Just found this. It's a big lead egg. Now it looks like it could be just a fishing weight but that's really heavy for a fishing weight. So it might be a plumb bob or even inch more interesting. I found one similar to this which could actually be a Roman, I don't think this is so I'm not getting too excited but they made Roman artillery ballista balls out of lead I think or it could be a steel yard weight. There's loads of possibilities this thing could be. So uh, I'll see if I can find a similarity. So stick around for the cleanup later and find out what it is or what it could be cool find well i've been finding lots of lead this morning but this is a better bit of lead it looks like a bag seal probably 20th century yeah so it's got some letters on it so it says cgi yeah this is this is not cgi this is real life, and what you're seeing is real finds. Oh. So those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, might be getting your eye in. Little spot to find, now this is a hard one. It looks just like a stone. I'll give you a few minutes, see if you can spot it. Pause it if you want. Have your guesses. So now, I will reveal. You're looking at. A musket ball. It's a big one as well. Well, maybe an average size one. On the larger side, but you can see where it's been cast there. And we fired from a gun 200 years ago, or maybe a bit, bit older. That's the second one I've had up today. Still pretty cool to find. Really common though. something button shaped it'll be a little bun 18th or 19th century button there shame it's not got nothing on it so slippery these finds they just fall straight out your hands have much up mate lots of dangerous potential murder weapons on the foreshore cluster of clay pipes here look and the modern rubbish which will be the mudlarks finds of the future not clay pipes those canister things two finds here One's a tooth of a sheep or something. One's a clay pipe. Plain one, I might leave that for somebody else, but it's got a nice little uh, maker's mark on the hill. R, I perhaps. 
just detected this thing. The second I thought it was a fossil. I thought maybe it's just in the spoil, but I think it's part of a, a lamp or something. I'll have to clean it up and let you know, but I think you a lot of mud on that. And the tide's coming in, so I think I'll save that one to clean up later. It's definitely a crumpled something or other. Stick around for the cleanup. Maybe just a furniture mount. Maybe part of an oil lamp. I don't know. Wait till I get home to clean that one up. I've always got my eyes open for a bit of driftwood. That's quite a nice chunky bit. Got to be quite old, isn't it? So uh, I'll put that in the dry and stack at home and maybe make something out of it one day. Might fit some. Uh, might do my candle idea with the uh, tops of the old bottles, very old bottles, 17th century bottles, 18th century bottles made into like a candle holder. Still an ongoing project that, so stick around, subscribe if you haven't done already, and see the things I make from the foreshore finds. Well, that is a lovely little oyster shell. Look at that, lovely and flat. It's beautiful in its own right, but I think that'd be a perfect candidate to try. See if I can make a button out of it. Maybe even wear the button. Put it on a shirt or something. Stick around and find out. Well guys, I just got chased up the foreshore by these waves and I just grabbed what I had in my hand which it's giving off a nice signal. And let's clean it up together, see what it is. I think it's probably going to be a lead coat, or maybe a lead seal. Feels leadish. You don't know until you clean it up. Could be a coin. Could be a coin. It's got the colour of lead about it, so. Uh, that'd be a nice little lead token, that'd be nice. I haven't had one in a little while. Oh, yeah, there we go, look. As it gets revealed in the water. A lovely lead, lead token, and it's got the maker's mark on it, as you can see there. SC, lovely. Now, this would have been a 18th ish lead token, and the maker would have made these as a small change. There's a severe lack of small change, so whoever SC was, maybe owned a baker, maybe owned a Maybe he owned a bakery, maybe he owned a tavern, or whatever, maybe he sold meat, maybe he was a butcher, whoever he was, Mr. SC or she, probably a man. Um, made these tokens and gave them out a small change. Really cool piece of history there. I haven't been messy before, so nice. You see those steps that come down? This is an old little jetty. You can see how the path has just deteriorated because Obviously it's no longer in use. But it's lovely seeing these old parts of London. I mean, it's a shame that they're not being, you know, kept in good shape, but, you know, they're not needed anymore. So, unfortunately, they go into rack and ruin. They're very slippery as well, so I need to be really extra careful. But in, in amongst all this stuff is uh, little goodies. Like, this is a, obviously only a part of a clay pipe. Would have been dropped long ago by whoever was walking up and down these stairs or whoever filled this in. So it's always worth looking around to see if there's anything eroding out. There's a little clay pipe there. Clay pipe bowl. Sorry, clay pipe stem but again it's broken so it's worth investigating. If you see anything let me know. So I detected something here. And I just wanted to share with you guys the extraction moment. Oh, God knows what it is. It's probably just a modern coin. Saying that, it does look quite interesting. But, oh. Oh, wow. What is that? That is something, something cool. Just like a little helmet of a... A little uh, medieval helmet. 
Now, a friend of mine found something very similar, and the only thing I could think it, what it could be is part of a fighting, cockfighting spur heel. And they put these on birds so they could have cockfights and do some serious damage to each other. Anyway, that's a really cool mystery find. I need to do a bit more research into that. I may need your help if I can't find any comparisons. But that is definitely crude, it looks complete. It's a weird and wonderful find, as we always get here on this channel. I'll never leave you disappointed, guys. And I'm never disappointed myself. Although, from time to time, I am disappointed because I come away with an apple, but you don't want to see me digging rubbish after rubbish, so these exciting finds are great for all of us. We'll all learn something new. I'm still trying to work out what it is. I've got no idea. The closest I can think of is a cockfighting spur, but I don't know how it attached to the uh, to the hill. But my friend Nick Stevens, aka Rock from Mud Men, um, he found something very similar. So I think it's possibly that. But again, without without um, doing some research, it's just a bit of a mystery. Awesome. around here so let's see if we can just see what's there might be modern coin could be just a lump of lead like that so many pieces of lead i think it would get boring if i showed them all well the rain stopped and i was just thinking to myself one last little find and i'll call it a day because i've had a really good morning but it just keeps on keeping me here and i've just had a little coin up i've got a feeling it's going to be an old one and it was just in underneath that rock there, so my instinct says it's a Georgian. It might be plain, but we'll give it a quick swill and see together what exactly it is. Very worn, very worn Georgian. Pretty cool though. Oh, there we go, you can see some writing around the edges. Oh, there we go. I can see it a bit better now. Oh, actually, I think that's a William. Superb. That's a, the, the uh, writing around that says, says Gully. I think it says like Gully verse or something like that, which makes that a William. And I'm just hearing on my headphones and my headphones are run out. So I think that's a great time to stop. So yeah, I've had a great morning. I never come down with any real expectations because you only get disappointed. But every find is a bonus. And I've had three cracking finds today. The hammer coin, that strange little mouse helmet, cockroach fighting spur object, and now this. Uh, Georgia, sorry, William the third or second, uh, half penny. Well, it's been a really good morning. Let's see what we found. So this is all the lead that I picked up. Probably about 50 pieces of lead. I'm not going to show you all that, obviously, but you can see how much trash is down here. You just got to keep on, keep on digging the tar targets, and eventually you'll find all the good stuff. Amongst the, the scrap lead, obviously, is uh, musket balls and uh, shrapnel balls from the war. All different types there, all different sizes. The ones with seams on tend to be musky balls. Bits of lead here. That was that got me going a bit. I thought that was quite interesting, but there's nothing on it. It looked like it might be just a crude trade weight. Some uh, bag seals there. I think this one might be quite interesting, but it's pretty hard to see at the moment. Um, so I'll clean that up and see if there's anything good on it and let you know. Again, this little one there, little bag seal used for tying the bags up. Little car there, throw that in the bin modern coinage and a few buttons it's a strange little object I don't think there's anything too exciting but I'll clean it up anyway and see if I can work out what exactly that is a top to something looks like a candle uh, sorry looks like a lamp fitting of some of some kind always find a few pipes well not always but today um, I did well a couple of little early one there really happy with that this is part of a barrel tap so that would have gone inside of a barrel, uh, half of it's broken off, so that's probably why it's flung. Um, poured your beer out from it. Cool little find. Uh, best finds today is this little object. Again, I've gone on about it enough. I will find out what that is, hopefully. If not, maybe you can help me um, find out what it is. Lovely little trading token there, SC. 
just had this up a few seconds ago. That was the William Halfpenny or Farthing. To double check on that. That's probably about 1705 roughly. Hammer coin yet to be cleaned, yet to be identified, but again, keep watching, I'll show you. This would be quite a cool little project. This is um, oyster shells with various sort of holes in. Some of them are natural, obviously. Other ones we find are square um, and have really perfectly hold shapes, but always just one in the middle. It's always a mystery to that. There's a few theories as to why they they were there, but I'm gonna experiment with a few of my own, see if I can create some, some buttons, really. So I think that'd be quite cool. Obviously I can pierce them with a hammer and a chisel or something, but what's the point in that? Um, I'm gonna see if I can make some Thames buttons, some oyster Thames buttons. So come with me, let's go make some Thames buttons out of the old oyster shells. So here are the oysters I'm going to make some buttons out of. I'm going to clamp them to the piece of wood using a G clamp so it holds it in place and drill through it using one of these. This is a diamond tips, don't know what you call it really, drill, router, cutter, 26mm should be, should be a nice size button. So uh, yeah, drills in, out pops the button, let's give it a go. Get in there. There we go. We're through. One button. Pretty cool. So what I'll do now is just use some sandpaper and just Finish it off. Looking good. Do that side a bit. Just using some finer sandpaper just to make it a little bit smoother. And look, you can see the colour of that, beautiful. Look. 